I'm going to share you into a little secret. Most IB students lose marks in their eyes, not because they're dumb, but because they have no idea what actually matters. I'm going to give you the no BS guide to getting a 7 on the science side. I'm going to give you clear frameworks, exact steps, no fluff, just the stuff that actually moves the score. Let's get into it. Your eye is a 3,000 word pitch. You're selling the examiner on the idea that you asked a good scientific question, you designed a method that answers it, you collected real data, you analyzed it correctly, you understood what it means, you know how to improve it. If you can prove these six five things, getting marks is simple. Today I'm going to give you the framework that consistently produces sixes and sevens without the confusion, without pretending that you've wanted to be a biochemist your entire life. First of all, choosing a topic. Students lose weeks trying to invent something unique. Here's the truth. You don't need original. You need doable. Do you want the fastest shortcut? Go to the Revision Dojo IA Bank. Filter for your subject, filter for the ones that got a seven, and then find a topic structure you like. Then change one variable so that it fits your resources and interests. For example, you can change the organism, you can change the range, you can change the measurement method, you can change the material or the condition. Boom, you've suddenly got a proven high scoring topic with your personal twist. This is exactly what top students do. The second part is crafting a research question. A good research question has a formula. It's what is the effect of independent variable on dependent variable measured by X method in X system. Example, what is the effect of caffeine concentration on heart rate in humans measured in beats per minute? It's specific. It tells the examiner exactly what you're measuring and how. If your research question cannot be explained in three seconds, it's bad. Think of it as a product offer. If the examiner can't understand it immediately, it won't sell. Step number three is the method. And this is where your fate is decided. Your method must do one single thing. Prove you knew what you were doing before you collected the data. It shows you thought about the process. The structure is, number one, justify everything. Instead of I used a calorimeter and say, I used a calorimeter because it gives quantitative absorbance values. Number two, list variables with sniper precision. Specific units, the independent variable, the dependent and the controlled. Three, step by step procedures a child could follow, not measured quickly, instead measured within five seconds of mixing. Number four, include safety and ethics. This needs to be relevant. And number five, if you can include a sketch, that's even better because it will show it graphically. If your method cannot be followed with 90% accuracy, it's not good enough. Part four, data collection. You have two paths. Path A is a classic experiment. Sure, it looks impressive. It's easier to talk about personal engagement and you can fully control variables. The cons though, it takes time, days can be lost due to equipment failures, and it's just a pain in the ass. Path B is doing a database investigation. It saves massive amounts of time, there's no lab time, no equipment, huge data sets, and way faster to analyze. The cons, it is harder to control variables, but you can explain this. You can tell which one is my favorite, but either path works. Pick the one that fits your timeline and sanity. Now the rules for the data. Always have five plus values for your independent variable. Always do three to five repeats. Always have units and uncertainties in the raw data table. And always list anomalies because bad data is going to give you a bad grade. Good data, everything else gets easier. Number five, data analysis. Here's where you can look smart without being a genius. AI here should be your unfair advantage. You need three things. First is your process data. So this includes your means, your rates, percentage changes, your standard deviation. You show a sample calculation, then automate the rest. Number two is graphs that tell a story. The independent variable is always on the x-axis, the dependence on the y-axis. Always have error bars and a title that explains your trend. Your graph should answer the research question at a glance. And number three is appropriate statistics. Here's a little cheat sheet. If you're showing a trend, you can do the R correlation. If you're comparing two groups, you normally do a t-test. If you're comparing more than two groups, you normally do a NOVA. If you want variability, you calculate the standard deviation. However, always give AI your research question, your data set, what type of relationship you're testing, and it'll tell you what statistical analysis you have to do. Then you are the one to interpret it. That's how you work smart without crossing the line. Step number six, the conclusion. This should be short, direct, and data-backed. Do not write an essay here. A great conclusion has exactly three points. You answer the research question in one sentence. You use numbers to prove it. So don't give blanket statements. Always say exactly what data proves it. And the third thing, and the one students always miss, is you compare it to the scientific theory. So you show how it aligns to previous papers. That's it. Move on. The next part, the evaluation. This is where top students win. Most students here list irrelevant things like human error nonsense. You're going to do better. A reevaluation has three parts, repeated three to four times. You identify a limitation, so something that actually affected your data. An example is temperature drifted by plus minus two degrees during the reaction. You explain the impact you're direct. You can say this introduces random error and increased variability at high temperatures. And then you provide a realistic improvement, not unrealistic. So you could say we're going to use the thermostatic water bath to maintain constant temperature. 
you rinse and repeat. You then do this for strengths and you do this for extensions. If you do this, you're golden. So to wrap this up, here's the secret IB won't tell you. Examiners don't care about how interesting your experiment is. They don't care if your results are perfect. They only care if you can show clear thinking, clean design, real data, correct analysis, and honest evaluation. You really don't need to be genius. You need clarity and execution. So if you want to score high, don't aim to be creative. Aim to be clear. Do the simple things really, really well. That's the difference between a four and a seven. And hey, if you're still stuck and you want someone to walk you through the exact I step-by-step -step process, tutoring with a seven student might give you the push you need. We help you build your research question, design your method, clean your data, choose the right statistics, and write the evaluation that actually gets you a seven. If you want help, you know where to find us. And until then, I'll see you next week.